Okay, welcome everyone. I'm just going to wait a quick second here to let uh, people join our webinar, but welcome to our webinar today, where we're going to do a live demo on what a real ransomware attack looks like. Uh, and my name is Michael Chagru from Pace Technical, and I'm joined by Milos and Steven from one of our uh, best partners and a big company in the IT security, cybersecurity, and uh, managed IT services space, Datto. So say hi, guys. <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and uh, hopefully this session will be informative for everyone, and uh, you guys will be able to see what a real ransomware attack looks like, and uh, hopefully we can shed some light on how you guys can protect your businesses against such an event. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, how's it going, everybody? <clears throat> My name is Steve. I'm a solutions engineer here at Data. Uh, I've been with the company as of yesterday for seven years and um, had various roles here. I was in support for a while, um, joined Partner Success and in Instant Management, and now I'm a solution engineer. Um, love the company, love the technology. It's always growing, it's always expanding, and we're always on top of it. Awesome. All right, so we're going to shut off our video just so our faces don't get in the way of any of the content here. And I'm going to get us all started and get our, uh, our slideshow running here. And away we go. So again, welcome everyone. I'm Michael Chagru, president of Pace Technical and with Milos and Steve from Datto, which you'll be hearing from in a minute. Uh, so a quick run through our agenda. We are going to start out just kind of giving you a little bit of update on kind of what's going on, talking about the landscape, um, maybe an update on, you know, the costs, which seems to be increasing. And if you've had a recent conversation with your insurance company about cyber insurance, you're probably up to date on that. Maybe a look at uh, some vulnerable industries and um, some steps to keep your business safe. Uh, which I'm going to talk you through, and then we're going to get into our demo, and we'll follow everything up with some Q&A. So I'm just going to keep running through it here. Just a little bit about us before we start. Obviously, if you don't know us, uh, I think a lot of people on the call already do know who we are, but we're a managed IT provider. We've been in business 22 years, servicing the GTA and companies across Canada. Um, providing managed IT support, managed security, managed cloud services. You know, we're an ISO 9001 business. And for the last seven years now, and we were just named recently, uh, again, on the great place to work in Canada list. So as I tell people, you know, our service model is pretty simple. We do all the basic reactive services that kind of any IT company in our industry does. Uh, but most people want to work with us for the proactive side of what we do. And that's what gets great results for the businesses that we support. If you've never talked to us about this or never had a conversation with me about this, I'd love to set something up and have a separate conversation where I can, you know, give you some great detail about a lot of the different things that we do here at Pace that uh, make our clients super happy. We do a lot of these educational webinars. Um, you can see these all on our website. If you just go to the media dropdown, you'll find webinars and you can access any of the recent content. I also did a good one uh, last year, also on cybersecurity that I'll be referencing a little bit later that you may uh, consider going back to have a look at. And now I'm going to turn it over to Milos. Thank you, Mike. Dado is a, is a global business. We're founded in 2007. Um, we have more than 1,800 employees worldwide. We protect a lot of data, no matter where the data lives. Today, we're going to be focusing more on the um, on the data that lives on-prem on your servers. But we uh, also can protect data if it lives, for example, in Microsoft 365 and cloud environments today. So cyber attacks are omnipresent, and, you know, anywhere throughout any sector and we'll see that and uh, our technology 
for the companies uh, in the GTA area and in broader Ontario is supported by PACE for, for the people that are on this webinar. No problem. So all businesses, uh, you know, they experience any kind of uh, disasters, catastrophes. You can see here on the left more natural catastrophes. They sure happen. And, you know, we, we've seen some in the past, in the recent years in North, northern Ontario. But uh, what people forget a lot is the human aspect of things, meaning there's uh, the landscape of cyber attacks change and the disasters change. There's a lot of, you know, human error ca causing this, cyber criminals causing this. And this is something as our world evolves that is uh, more present than ever. And we're here on this webinar today to basically demonstrate how Dado combined with PACE can help you out recover from a real ransomware attack or matter of fact, any kind of, uh, any kind of other attack. So uh, next, Mike. Okay, oops. Dado produced a, a ransomware report uh, on the state of the channel and uh, speaks about SMBs as well. So this is a report during our Q&A that uh, you could type in the chat if you'd like to see a copy of that. We can send that to attendees. You have the URL where it's located at. And why this is important is just quantifies and give you more information about, um, you know, what are the real numbers behind this? Who are the cyber criminals? What industries is, is affecting? And what we see here is literally that we don't, uh, you know, there's no industry that's uh, less impacted than another uh, by, by these kind of, uh, you know, cyber attacks. And they're omnipresent within, within every sector. We have a lot of people on this webinar on different multiple uh, sectors of activity uh, economically, and there's no one that's left behind. I mean, these guys are the cyber criminals, they just attack, um, you know, everyone. Thank you, Belinda. We'll, uh, we'll definitely send you the, the copy of the report. Next slide, Mike. Perfect. So like I said, the ransomware is widespread. Um, just coming back to my other slide, and uh, we'll see a few examples of... Uh, of, uh, you know, attacks that occurred in Canada. And um, I'll, I'll share a story as well of my friend Tanya, which is now a Dado employee, but she used to uh, have a hair loss clinic here in Quebec. And uh, she was basically uh, impacted by two ransomwares. And uh, the bottom line of this is she had to close her business. So we're kind of doing preventive stuff here and offering you a mean to protect yourself properly. You can go ahead, Mike. So this is a number that keeps growing up. This is a number from six months ago, but uh, it's uh, it's constantly on the rise. Uh, it's costing small and mid-sized businesses up to $75 billion a year. And what's important to understand here is that it's not causing necessarily, it's not because necessarily you guys have uh, valuable files. Uh, the cyber attacks or the cyber criminals, they go after the fact that they know that it costs you guys a lot of money being down, being on um, without operations. You know, imagine if your ERP was down for a week or something, how much would that cost? There's a, there's a lot of examples on the Canadian level, uh, how this occurred to businesses. And we also at Dato have a calculator which uh, you can run with the guys at Pace. Uh, it's an RTO calculator that basically calculates your time. And we'll share an email, Mike's email address at the end of the webinar. Uh, or Mary Eleni, you can put it in the chat and you can send a quick email uh, to Mike just to do an estimation of what downtime costs for your business. Mike? All right. So it's important to know uh, in these kind of situations what uh, you know what are the parameters we need to look at. Uh, there's the parameter of RPO, which is what uh, amount of lost data can you tolerate before it becomes critical, and then the RTO is the the 
that the typical downtime. And I was speaking with Mike right before this webinar, and he was mentioning that he just had a conversation with the customer about this. Can you share a little bit, Mike, how these, uh, you know, conversation go? Exactly. Like we have this conversation, certainly with our clients. I have it with a lot of prospective companies as well. And it really all depends on your business. Like what would it cost your business to be down? That's kind of where you really start this conversation. What would it cost us? How much disruption and whatnot to come up with that timeline to say, you know, is it okay if we're down for an hour? Like I speak to some people, they could literally go days and use pen and paper. And then there's other companies where five minutes literally is costing them thousands of dollars in lost sales opportunities. So it's really important to look at your, your individual business because you can spend thousands and even millions of dollars, you know, replicating everything that you have to get you that instant failover in like seconds uh, of recovery. Or what we generally do is look for a balanced solution. Datto is a fantastic solution for this. Thank you, Mike. You can go to the next slide. Um, and here on the next slide, we're just going to give a couple of examples, uh, you know, about, you know, how this affects Canada. Many people, you know, think this will happen in bigger industries in the U.S., in other parts of the world. But we can see here that 78% of Canadian businesses, you know, uh, were affected by a successful ransomware attack. Um, it, to the point where... Um, Interesting fact here, even the government of Canada released a website called cyber.gc.ca, which basically is an educational website about what you can do to protect your business and what steps does the Canadian government take to help SMBs. And on that website, you can often even find funding for organizations like you to invest in cybersecurity through firms like PACE. So I, I definitely recommend you check that out. And I love the that, second, I, I love yeah, that site. I recommend it anytime I'm talking about security. Um, you'll see it referenced on all of my previous security webinars. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it just shows you that, you know, not only the SMBs, but our government is very concerned. And I believe that uh, there was an announcement a couple of months or a couple of weeks back that, they're even ramping up that budget even more for SMBs. And there's a ton of programs that uh, educational um, government programs that keep, can really help SMBs. And if you really need guidance through this, I believe that PACE has a little more information on that as well, and, or maybe how their, pre, how their customers have used that program. And, you know, it's just all across the board. We can see, you know, that, Canadian organizations are not left behind. And what I want to, if you can switch to the next slide, Mike, what I can uh, really um, reassure you here, we can see a couple of examples, right, on, uh, on businesses, Superior Plus Corp, the TTC that was hit recently, D-Box and Canada Post. You might think and say, okay, these are big organizations, but I can guarantee you that, uh, you know, it happens to smaller organizations as well. My friend Tanya, for example, she was doing, you know, just backups on, on regular tapes and she couldn't, she, she didn't have like a true business continuity strategy um, because often people say, okay, I have backup, but it's m a lot more than that. And PACE are experts in, on approaching uh, the business continuity aspect. Of, of any business. And Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you had multiple incidents with your customers where they've been attacked and with data technology, you've been able to recover their data, correct? A hundred percent. Yeah. Datto has been a rock solid solution, even with a couple of companies, you know, we took them over. We had one uh, just shortly after taking them over, they had very, very outdated technology. You know, we weren't, able to get in and replace some of the outdated unsupported equipment. But immediately though, the first thing that we did was put in a Datto and it's what ab absolutely saved this company. 
Exactly, exactly. And the next slide, what we'll see is what we discussed a little bit uh, here about, you know, small businesses. And you can see that these numbers are alarming. And if you, you see one there that says three out of four small businesses say that they don't have sufficient personnel to address IDR security, the need for you guys to have a managed service provider like Pace is more present than ever. Uh, the landscape of attacks is so huge that businesses that don't have a proper MSP um, and certainly that, you know, is not uh, detail oriented like bases, you should really speak with, uh, with Mike and see what, and we'll see a little bit of his layered approach uh, later in the, in the presentation, but do yourself a favor, write to Mike, we'll have his email address. I don't know if it's already in the chat, but just to do an evaluation of your current posture, how, how are you doing in terms of cybersecurity? It's much more, you know, it, it's not a final destination. I always say that security is a journey, something that evolves and something that, you know, protects various sectors of the eco economy. We can see here, uh, I won't go through these numbers, but uh, we can see that any kind of business, even the nonprofit there on the top right, they're affected because the, these guys, the cyber criminals, they go after downtime. They know that businesses, uh, corporations, and so on cannot function without IT no more. Uh, the days where you know you could <laughs> drive a business with paper only are gone, and everything resides in some kind of data set. And precisely what we're saying here is no matter what sector of economy you're in, uh, there's a solution and Pace has an approach. And Mike, um, you have, right, customers across all sectors yep. of, of, of economy. That That's doesn't right. change your approach. Exactly. You have to have a multi-layered approach, 100%. Exactly. And uh, then what we'll see on the few next slides is, uh, you know, that business continuity is really different than backup. This is a strategy that keeps your business up and running no matter what happens. So it's a multi-layered approach and we'll see later on in, in an event of a cyber attack, how our approach can help. And it can really be the difference uh, we can see here about intelligent business continuity, which is hybrid cloud-based. Why hybrid is important is let's say that something happens, nothing works locally, in your office, you can we can still boot all your systems in Zendato Cloud and allow you to, to continue working. And then on the next slide, we'll see a little bit of architecture. I won't go in detail, super detail how this works, but what this explains basically is that, you know, you always have a method of bringing your systems online, whether that be a physical failure for servers, whether that be a flood, a fire or something, there's always a place whether, where you see here on the continuity device in the middle or in the data cloud, there's always a possibility to boot your systems. So that means there's always a possibility and for you to keep your business running. And that's the major part of it. People, there's people on this call, they say, yeah, sure, Milos, I have backup. But backup as itself, without a full strategy about, you know, full business continuity data flow like we see here is really not enough these days. And this, uh, do yourself a favor, please evaluate your current stance and your posture in terms of cybersecurity. Um, Mike, you do have a, a method to evaluate a business, right, in, in order to audit them. And that's an evaluation that you're willing to do for any business, right? Exactly. Any business upfront, you know, we do basic technical overviews to, you know, do a high level analysis, but we also have more deep uh, level audits to really understand everything that's going on and really help businesses come up with the right solution in this area that fits their business need. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on the next slide, what we'll see here is that, uh, like I said, it's hybrid, it's automated, there's no manual, there's no disks you as customers have to move from a location to another. This is all taken care by our solution 
And the guys at Pace are really experts in, in terms of deploying that solution. Um, and, you know, they've been deploying that solutions for a number of years. We can see settings about the solution here, which you can determine what times of day is important for you as a specific business to have backup. You know, it, are you work? Are you a 24 seven shop? Are you a retail shop that's mostly in activity during the weekdays? And we'll see on the next slide as well, uh, how a couple of points, you know, uh, that we verify the data integrity of, of your data. So not only we'll take backup, but we'll prove you that the last uh, backups are successful. Like I said, this is image based. We're not only taking files on your desktop and making sure that these are recoverable. We're taking the entire systems. And as Mike scrolls through the, the, the screens here, you can see that there's multiple types of restore and we'll demonstrate that with Steve's presentation here. And this really allows you to, whether you're missing a single file, whether you're down to a natural catastrophe or something, you have means of virtualized. Therefore, I really recommend everyone to, you know, do that audit with Pace, see where their posture at and see how this hybrid cloud image-based solution can help. And in the next slide, we'll basically put a little bit of more context into that, where instant virtualization, what does that mean? That means that you have your physical systems on the left that goes, to, in case of an encryption or a cyber attack, goes to a data appliance, which then allows you to uh, bring back your system as, as low as five minutes before this happens. And you can, we can see here a list of benefits of virtualization compared to, you know, normal backup. It really helps you reduce the downtime. Think about backup. Some of your businesses, some of the businesses on this webinar have 5, 10, 15 terabytes of data. Can you imagine on a corporate network how much time it would take to download that data, right? And on the next slide, I think we have a quick uh, question for you guys. And uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, take, uh, I'll let Mike take it from here. So I'm going to launch. You. Yeah, I'm going to launch this poll. And this is a question uh, that I ask lots of businesses that we meet with. Like if your business was ever to get hit with a ransomware attack, or let's call it really any kind of major disaster, fire, flood, or whatnot, do you know what the process and timeline is for getting your business back up and running? So I'm just going to launch this poll. I'm just very curious to see, like, do you actually know? Have you absolutely run through this, you know, test and this scenario to understand, you know, what it is? And the process can't be, yeah, we call our IT guys. <laughs> uh, because uh, that's generally an, an answer that I get from people. But um, I think this is a question, certainly every business owner or uh, manager in a business that's responsible for IT should really understand. Um, so in the instance of time, I think we've got um, you know, a decent amount of responses now. Just give it a couple of more seconds. As I think we've got a pretty good, even though that not everybody has uh, has chimed in yet, I think we've probably, probably got a pretty good sampling here. So I'm just going to end the poll here right now and share the results. Uh, and you can see 27% of people said, yes, you know, we know and probably have a good process around it. Hopefully, there are lots of PACE clients because I know we have several on the call today. And then some that absolutely have no clue. So, you know, this is definitely, you know, a risk area that you need to pursue and talk to your IT people. And certainly if it's us, we're, ha we're happy to have that conversation. But talk to whoever your IT people, if you have internal IT or an outsourced company, it's a question you need to ask the next time you have a meeting. So I'm just going to keep moving. Now, and, uh, and thank you so much, uh, Milos, for that info. And where I wanted to go is, um, you know, tools are great and tools are a big part of IT security. Uh, but in our world, 
and our philosophy, really the tool set is about 25% of what you really need um, to be truly secure. And 75% of it is going to be reliant on what we refer to as hygiene. And hygiene is basically that process and procedure behind the tools and along with the tools. Like how are your IT security tools, like your firewall, your antivirus, your phishing protection, you know, two-factor authentication, et cetera. How is that all being managed, maintained, and configured? How is user security, permissions, files, passwords, et cetera? That's all makes up the hygiene. We feel that that's the most critical part. So I will say Datto is an amazing business continuity solution. It has saved us and our clients many times over and worth the weight in gold. But by itself, it will not save you from all aspects of a cyber attack. Some of the modern cyber attacks go after trying to retrieve data and do what they call kind of like public shaming. So they'll gather you know, as much data from your systems as they can. A lot of times they're looking to try and get client data and expose your clients and make you look awful and really kind of go after the reputation of your business. That's what we're seeing in modern attacks, which is the biggest risk associated with cyber is the risk to your business and your clients saying, oh my God, I don't want to do business with these people anymore. And just the, you know, your name getting out in the public uh, because you do have to, by law, if any personal information at all is, is taken from a cyber attack, by law in Canada, you are required to report that cyber incident. So this is an analogy that I like to use. I'm going to run through it super quick with you just to kind of get this idea of all these other things that you need to be doing and, and the proactive nature of it. So how do you know your business is secure? So I like to you know, use this analogy of your home. How do you know your home's secure? Well, you have all these aspects. You have locks on your doors, locks on your windows. Maybe you have an alarm, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide. You have curtains and blinds so people can't like see in. But really, how do you know? It's great to have these things, but how do you know you're secure? Well, yeah, you got locks on the doors, but you need to check the lock to make sure it's actually locked. Same thing. Are the windows closed? Are they locked? Is the alarm turned on? Do you have batteries in your smoke detectors and have you ever tested them? Same thing with carbon monoxide and curtains, et cetera. So it's great to have the tools, but there needs to be a process in place to make sure that the tools are actually effective and working for you. But now let's consider your IT network. Here's a bunch of the things that you probably have in place as most businesses do for security. You obviously have a firewall, you have your antivirus, anti-malware, probably a spam filter, maybe a monitoring tool. I'm assuming you have backups and maybe even some additional security tools. Anyway, great to have the tools. How do you know you're secure? Who's looking at the firewall settings, doing updates, checking you know, the configurations, security software? What kind of tool is it? Is it a more advanced, you know, next-gen type tool that's going to stop most threats or is it an older technology and is it up to date who's keeping it up to date and when monitoring tools you know they only tell you after something's gone wrong so that's kind of like a reactive tool but a lot of people think oh the monitoring tool is going to save me not necessarily um backups you know are you tested do you know your recovery time what kind of a solution is it? Is it, is it a next-gen solution and a business continuity solution like Datto? And even the additional security tools, again, they've got to be managed. They've got to be kept up to date. How are, they, how are they set? But tools are still only a part of it because in an IT network, you got to remember there's all these other things. There's how users are managed and the user security within Active Directory, which is basically what controls all the security settings of all your users. There's wireless security, security on your remote access, on your remote software that you use, file access and permissions. Like there's so many other things to consider that tools are not going to cover anything that you see on this screen here. These are all manual processes that a person has to, with the proper process procedure, check all of these things. So, 
this is really what the point I want to drive home. Process and procedure needs to be in place, as well as somebody needs to be showing you the evidence. I love to talk to lawyers about this because they get in. We have <laughs> several legal clients, um, but you need to be shown. You can't just take it on the laurels. Oh, yeah, I think my IT people are doing this you know, after hours or behind the scenes. Yeah, they don't give me any reports, but I'm sure they're doing it. Let me tell you from experience, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that was our company as well. We had the best intentions of doing all these things, doing all these checks in the background. But guess what? We were too busy putting out the fires of the day. We didn't have dedicated resources assigned to all these things. And guess what? It didn't get done. And we didn't report on it. Why? We weren't doing it. The reporting part, let me just tell you all, is the easy part. If you have the process and procedure and structure in place, reporting will happen. And you know that needs to be a conversation if you're not working with us that you need to have with whoever, if you have an internal person or an external person, you need to have that conversation. Just to give you a glimpse of how we do it, we have a custom reporting portal that we use. If you're a client, you probably know this. If you're not a client and you'd love to see a demo of it, I'd love to set that up separately. You can shoot me a message in chat or I'll give you my email at the end of this. Um, but this is where we, you know, we have resources for all the end users. There's even training in here on all the Microsoft products that we provide for our clients um, in this section here in our university section. But even just keeping up to date documentation and reporting all the documentation, reporting all the results of the proactive checks that we do, assigning a simple risk score to it. Again, you as a business need to see the evidence and exactly where you stand and not you know, taking it um, on, uh, on just somebody's word. The other thing around security, yeah, we provide a, a, a simple dashboard that lets our clients know you know exactly where they stand based on you know eight critical security areas that we've defined. Again, at a glance, you'll know exactly where you stand. Um, some other ways, uh, I did a webinar last year on the 18 essential ways that you can protect your business. I'm not going to go through it now because that's a whole webinar in itself, but you can refer to it again, go to our website. You'll see the uh, webinar. You can you know, access it on demand whenever you'd like. And there's a lot of good, even though it was a year ago and lots of things have changed, it's still a lot of really great relevant information. And uh, certainly if you need more help beyond this, I'm happy to uh, have a conversation. Now, with that, I want to turn it over to Stephen for you know the real uh, primary reason here uh, why we're all together, and we want to talk about this uh, seeing a real uh, ransomware attack in real time. So, Stephen, I'm hoping um, you might potentially be able to take access yourself now if you could test that out. There we go. All right. Can everyone see my screen here? All good. It says, uh, AMZ file on it. Mm, yep. Perfect. All right, guys. So let's go through an actual ex exercise here. So this is a uh, one of my VM VMware uh, vSphere uh, consoles. Um, so we're going to log into this file server here. <clears throat> now this I'm on a file server, but this can happen to anybody's um, anybody's machine. Um, Alan from accounting can have the same um, have the same action that that this is going to have. <clears throat> this is just on a file server. So let's say Alan in accounting gets an email from Candace. Um, you know, he asked for something and someone hacked her email and sent him this. So it looks like it's actually from her. And he goes and heads, downloads it and double clicks on it and saying, oh, I'm going to open this. Boom. What happened? All of these files and you're watching it in real time right now are changing to WannaCry, meaning that all of these files are basically useless. I can't open any of these. Um, and it says, hey, if you want to, um, if you want to have your data back, you know, you can pay me in Bitcoin. Um, <clears throat> so what happens then? Um, now, in this demo, this is only for, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is only affecting my documents. Um, but this can spread through a network within minutes. And by a network, I mean every single one of these servers are connected. That it'll spread like ants on sugar. Uh, Bad analogy, <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, 
uh, yeah. So what do we do? What do we do to fix it? Um, luckily, this backs up with Datto. <clears throat> so this is the Datto local um, device interface right now. So what I'm going to do is now this is AMZ file. So I'm backing up AMZ file, luckily, and I'll show you after this demo what um, you know uh, some more ins and outs and, and why Datto is is as good as we are. So <clears throat> this is looks like a files restore. Oops. Um, right now, all of my documents and desktop look like they were they were hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore that within a matter of seconds here. So let's click on file restore. Um, and also, we can uh, proactively let you know that if you're looking to restore this point, there's some ransomware already possibly in that backup. Um, so let's skip to another one. Let's skip to another one. Luckily, the most recent one doesn't. So we're going to do that one. Mount it up, and we can either access this through a Samba share, or we can go right to a web um, web thing and go to the C. Now we can back up every single. I mean, we can restore every folder, you know, as as such, or we can get as granular as going into you know one folder and getting one file. So I'm going to go to the administrator, and I'm going to download uh, documents, downloads and desktop. <clears throat> I have downloads folder in my downloads. All right. So what I'm going to do here is um, I want to essentially get, get rid of this um, encryption. Uh, where is this? This is a uh, nope. apologize. All right. So we can see you want to cry here. I'm going to unzip these documents just in the same folder. All right. Documents. And, and I'm going to overwrite all of these, all of these bad files here. So let's just, uh, let's just paste them in. We're going to replace those. All right, let's just get rid of everything. Ah, it's all garbage anyway, right? So here we go. Copy. Paste. And just like that. All of my files have been restored, and I can get back to work. Maybe I, I want to mention something here. What uh, what Steve is demonstrating is how you can actually um, bring back your files, right? But let's say that the whole system is encrypted. What's important and what Steve will show you is we can actually virtualize that server, right? In the previous state where the server was, and in the case of the, uh, the list of servers on the left, that was all encrypted, we can also virtualize multiple servers under that appliance. So the idea here is you've seen how quick Steve was able to copy the files. We say with the Datto, the downtime is as, as short as a coffee break. And this is particularly true when Mike can testify to this, not only they have Datto devices protecting their customers, but they have monitoring tools that will alert them proactively rather than reactively in events like this. Yeah, I was going to say that was very, very quick. Like I was expecting it to take at least 10 minutes. That was, <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as, as Milos was mentioning, um, this is how we proactively let you know. Like sometimes ransomware attacks, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different kinds out there. But some of them lay dormant for a while, slowly encrypting these these um, you know uh, hard files, and you don't really notice yet. And then all of a sudden, your system's gone, and you realize that this has been this has been uh, you know happening for for a while. So we can see in here all ransomware attacks from yesterday. All of these these ran this ransomware was like sitting on this machine. And you can see, you know, I, I fixed it, <clears throat> so we're we're clear there. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's say hypothetically, let's say this infection took down this um, <clears throat> this server. So I'm going to shut down uh, AMZ file. Yes, it's gone, right? It's offline. It's not usable at all. As I mentioned before, we back it up with Datto. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is instead of a file restore, we're going to do a local virtualization. So what this does is it uh, virtualizes the exact machine on the local device itself. Um, so we're gonna choose that same snapshot that is clear because we don't want to have ransomware in it. We're gonna hit start restore. And from here, it's three clicks away from getting up and running. 
you choose how many, uh, how many resources you want. So let's say this needs eight gigs of RAM, right? Ooh, not 80. <laughs> Uh, just 80, yeah, not 80, um, we want to bridge this to the network. Now we have different options here. We can disconnect it if you want to do some tests. We can put it on a firewall. We can bridge it to another um, NIC. But let's say we want it on the exact um, you know, network that it's on. So we're going to hit apply. And we are going to start a VM. Now that button that I unclicked, that's, um, that sets up a rescue agent, what we call and what that does is when it's up and running, it creates a new agent and it takes a snapshot every hour on the hour. So that way, if you're up and running on this machine for you know, a week, two weeks, there's data change. There is um, different files being created, different, um, all that stuff. So what happens if um, it gets hit with ransomware again? Do you have to start all over again? No, not with, the, not with this one. Um, I unchecked it because uh, you know, I don't need to do it personally right, right now, but it is also a very good way to get back up and running. So just so uh, see... stop there, uh, Steve, for a second. So I just want to, again, uh, detail the difference between business continuity and backup. So what Steve did here, he's putting the machine back online. As you can see, it's very quick. This is the machine restored with clean data and so on. Now think of it from a perspective where you have a classic backup solution. You would have to download the data, find another VM, mount that VM, put the downloaded data back in the server, and you could have a lot of, a lot of data on, that, on the server that went down. So that process could take a day sometimes, two days, sometimes a week. Now with Datto, we literally did two restores, including a full virtualization in less than six minutes. And that's the real... Uh, benefit of business continuity because this reduces your downtime. And as you can see here, uh, as you can see here, Steve is booting the machine. The machine is back online. Um, maybe, um, Mike, do you want to take a question from Marta that says would be most useful is to understand what we can do as employees to avoid being duped by, duped by hackers. And that's a lot of education and guys at PACE can provide guidance on that. Do you want to take this question, Mike? Yeah, 100%. So in education really is the biggest thing because, you know, what these cyber criminals are trying to do is social engineer and trick people into doing things and clicking on things that they shouldn't. Um, so the best way to guard against that, it is with education. And you can't just educate people once. It has to be ongoing. Um, you know, we use a service called Know Before, and we do um, uh, and we do help businesses with both the training as well as the uh, the simulation um, and and whatnot simulation. So we're going to do test emails to test people on the knowledge that they learn through the, through the basic training and, uh, and, and see where they stand. And if they fail the test, we're going to maybe direct them to some other specific education that's going to help them and really help guard them against things. But always being cautious, especially with email, <laughs> is, uh, is definitely the way to, to try and stay safe. Thank you, Mike. Um... So Steve uh, booted up the machine. Nitin will, will take your question uh, after Steve. I see you have uh, the machine booted up now. So basically what you mean here is that users can log in uh, to, to a terminal server, to any, any machine that's protected with a data and continue working, right? Exactly. So <clears throat> the benefits of being able to restore a file server is that a lot of the, <clears throat> a lot of the users that go into the office they rely on a file server to access their files that they work on. Sometimes it's not stored on their local desktop. Sometimes it's, it looks like it is like they go to a D or E volume, but it's stored somewhere else. Um, so what a file server does is if, you, if the audience doesn't know, um, it populates, that's where it comes from. So having that down means that you can't access any of your files. Having it back up, looks like you can. And looks like you, know, you could have stepped away for a coffee break um, by the time this this was up and you would have been none the wiser that you were even down. 
So it's, it's extremely beneficial to, to have such a uh, platform to rely on when this, this type of situation happens. I can also mm -hmm. tell you uh, uh, another story of a client of ours that over a weekend, their server just had a, ma a major hardware failure and there was no way to get hardware in in time. So what we did was basically what Steve just showed you, virtualized their server at the data center in the cloud. Then the people came into work Monday morning and they noticed one of our pace techs in their office. And he was there just to kind of cover and start working on the server and try and figure out how to restore it. But in the meantime, all the employees were working off of the, what Steve kind of just demonstrated you, the virtualized server running at the data center. And the clients didn't even notice. They said, well, the server's running a touch slower or, than I, I normally see it, but I have access to everything. What are you doing here? They had no idea they had a major failure. The data totally saved them. And that's the true meaning of the word business continuity. Kept their business running and functioning. It is such a great, great product. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> can we take Nitin's question here? Uh, says, is the backup, uh, is the data backup constant or at a point in time? We have data backup through base, but just curious if there will there would still be uh, the potential for some lost data between files being hacked and being restored from the data backup uh, files. So the, the interim, uh, do you want to take this, uh, Mike? I can take it too, up to you. You go right ahead. You guys are the experts on this. Yeah. I mean, I know the answer so, as well. Yeah, so the data, what makes it really good is it takes backup every file up to every five minutes, right? So that's the kind of maximum we can do. So there's there's no s system that's perfect, but we're as fast as as we can. Many of our you know competitors in this space will take backups three times a day. We'll take backup every hour. We can be really really fast. So the probabilities, and especially with the with you know the retentions and and the pace is knowledge of your business. The mm -hmm. possibilities of you uh, missing a lot of files is almost inexistent. And to this day, I think that Pace has a very clean record of not, you know, losing any data for their customers because they know this technology well, and they're also, um, you know, our premier partner in Canada, meaning that they have access to our engineers to our DR testing team and so on. So no system is perfect to answer your question, but yeah. we're as close as it gets to a full clean state without zero data loss. Yeah. So Steve, can I uh, take control again? Are you kind of yeah. done with your part of it? Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. Huh? So. Um, oh, let me stop sharing. Yeah, let's see here. I think this is it. Yes. So I just wanted to, uh, oops. What happened there? I lost it. Okay. I just wanted to get to this, uh, to this last page here and display that. And if there was any other Questions, if anybody wanted to ask those. Uh, there's Elena, and I think we didn't answer the questions. Any recommendations on how manufacturers can protect their production machinery for which software may be outdated or not updatable? Um, yeah, so I can uh, yeah. just partially answer this. I, I had mentioned the example of you know, one of our clients that when we first took them on had allowed, you know, based on the nature that they were also a manufacturing business, uh, they were running older, outdated software because of some of the software that you know, needed to run on older systems. So, you know, us putting the data in place, definitely we were able to run the data, even though they were, they were running some of the older software. So I would say that you know, if we were coming in and working with a business like that, 
putting in a data would be the absolute first thing that we would be doing just to make sure that we had that initial protection in place. And then trying to work and consult with the business on, you know, is there any way to get around uh, having to run those older outdated systems? If we do, there's probably some other means in place that we can put in to protect. But absolutely, first and foremost, you need a solution like this, especially if you have to run a risky environment with older, you know, more outdated uh, type databases. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. I think Steve wanted to add something on that, Steve. Uh, for which one? For the, the last question, but we can move ahead. We have a couple of ones we can take. How does that work with ERP system that use large SQL databases? And we're talking about 300 terabytes and plus a question from Dennis. Um, I can take that one. Uh, Datto is designed to um, protect your production systems. Now, every uh, company is, is different. And that's why, Dennis, I think the best, I don't know if you're already working with Pace, maybe Mike can confirm, but uh, there's, it's, it's really a case per case, and this is not a solution, a cookie cutter solution that, or a cookie cutter kind of approach that Pace takes. Please write an email to Mike just so just that he can evaluate, you know, we can definitely take SQL databases and so on. And we can definitely take ERPs. It's just a matter of seeing how that's built. And what's, a, what, you know, what's a degree of priority on, on your end, right? So please write an email to Mike and it will be his pleasure to audit and see what the architecture is exactly. But um, we, we protect any small and medium business, no matter where the data lives, right? So it's, uh, there's always, you know, the, we, we, in 99% of the cases, we can work with it. But once again, for that uh, larger data, we just need to understand the architecture. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're somebody we're not already speaking to, we could have a conversation and really love to love to have a look at it and see how we might be able to help you out. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, maybe something to add here and that I want to reinforce is with the current landscape of, you know, threats, SMB is no longer, and I can assure you that is no longer equipped to take on IT challenges and and you know, hunting of threats by themselves. It's crucial to work with an MSP. One, for the data protection part, Mike was referring to the processes earlier in the, in the, in the webinar and pace where they excel at is they have a, an approach of processes to not leave any part of your business uh, kind of without attention. So meaning that, you know, they take care from the single user that logs in once a week to the CEO that needs to have two, three computers and, and you know, any type of function in the business. So do yourself a favor, please write to Mike, have an audit completed on your business, just to see where you stand in terms of security. Because without it, you're kind of in the dark. And I can assure you for working directly at the manufacturer level here, data in cybersecurity. It's no longer a question if you'll get hit by a cyber attack. The question is when, and don't wait before when it's too late. Because once you get hit often and you didn't have the solution, often there's a lot of data that's not, you know, restorable or something like that but there's ways to prevent that through education and, and tools and processes. Yeah, very, very well said. So again, you know, if you're a client of Pace, uh, th thank you for your, your business and continued support. And if you're not, and you'd love to have a, a conversation and just see how we do things and maybe get another opinion on how you guys are doing things today. Again, I'd love to have a conversation with you whether that's now or if now's not the right time, you know, you know certainly check back with us. Perfect. Thank okay. you very much, Mike. My, once again, my name is Milos. I'm going to turn my camera so you can see me again.
but uh, definitely thank you very much. If also Mike is also very uh, open to other cybersecurity subjects, I'm sure. Maybe <laughs> something that's on your mind and we didn't cover or it was not the purpose of this yeah. webinar. Thank you, Steve, for the demo. Amazing demo. Yeah, Thank keep you. your eyes open. We have some more educational webinars coming up. There'll be a couple of them run over the summer. Uh, so just watch your email if you're on our invite list and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Thanks Thank you so much. Have a okay, good day. everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye now.